So uh, this is Jerry Jenkins, and we're going to start uh, a basic review Python here. Now the Python language, first of all, you'll find two references. Uh, this is a language reference, which is useful link, and the Python tutorial, which is the tutorial that the python.org uh, people put together. And uh, so we're going to start, I'm going to use idle because we're going to type expressions and have it do stuff. Um, there's actually a print command in Python. If you say print parentheses and some uh, expression you want to type out, you can print that. But when you're in idle, it will automatically print the result of any expression. So if I switch over to idle here, I can say uh, hello, and it types out the result of that expression. Uh, the plus operator, for example, will add strings together. So if I do this expression, it'll add uh, hello to to you, uh, concatenate them. And uh, I can do numeric expressions, 12 plus 4, or just the number 1. And you'll see any expression I type in, it just will return the result of that expression. So idle is very useful for just looking at expressions in Python. So we're going to use that here. Now remember, uh, we've already talked about object-oriented programming, and this is the primary focus in Python. Everything in Python is an object, which is, an, uh, is different than Java, for example. In Java, uh, everything is an object except for the primitive types, which are numbers and booleans, and so there's a list of primitive types. Python has decided to do everything as an object, which has some definite advantages. And we're going to see that everything that is an object um, has data and a list of methods, and the methods are called the interface. And how what controls all that is what's called a class. So for every, which you typically will think of as a data type. So for every data type in Python, there is an associated class, and the class defines the methods that operate on the data. And internally in the class, there's code to actually represent the data that for that object. Uh, so data items are actually called objects in an object-oriented par uh, paradigm, and an object is also said to be an instance of a class. Now, now uh, the author talks about atomic data types. He doesn't mean the same thing as in Java and C++, where you have primitive types, because everything in Java is an object, and they're not; those primitive types are not objects in C++ and Java. By atomic types, he just means the types that are built into the Java language and that you use all the time. Uh, but these are objects. So we're, we're going to look at the int and the float type. Uh, the int type stores whole numbers, and the float type stores uh, numbers that have a decimal place, and also very large uh, uh, numbers that end up being scientific notation. Uh, the standard operators on these are plus, minus, multiply, and divide, and exponentiation for raising number to a power. Uh, so let's look at some examples. So uh, let's continue here. So if you type a number that doesn't have a decimal place, it's uh, it's an int, and uh, you can add ints together. Uh, you can divide ints. Now, when you divide an int in version three uh, and beyond you get a floating point result. So you get an exact result, quote exact, because nothing's exact in bits in a computer. Uh, but if you divide uh, using the slash operator in the 2.7 version of Java, be aware that you get an integer divide, which is the same as in C++ and Java. It truncates the result. Uh, to do an integer divide on purpose in the 3.0 and above Python, you have to use the slash slash operator. So I can do 100 slash slash 3. That's going to do an integer divide of 3 into 100. So you, it truncates it to the, uh, the lowest integer. Uh, of course, you can do expressions combining all these. So I can say raise 2 to the third power and add 3 to that, and then multiply it by 4. So that would be all integer operations. Uh, if you type any number that includes a decimal place, you get a floating point result. And that's that's how floats are determined. 
Now another uh, of these atomic types is the Boolean type and it's actually B-O-O-L class and it's useful for representing true and false values. Now the Boolean type you type in true and it has to be a capital T or false with a capital F. So I can type true and when that puts in a piece of data that is set to true and I can set false and if I don't capitalize you get an uh, error. So it says name true is not defined. Uh, you can combine the Boolean types with uh, and, or, and not. Now these are different than in C++ and Java. You have ampersand, ampersand for and, and vertical bar, vertical bar for or, and the exclamation point symbol for not. Here you actually use the English words. So if I want to do um, false uh, or true, you get a value of true. So that's an expression, a Boolean expression. And you can do uh, not true, and you get that. Uh, so it has some examples here. You can do not false or true. Let's try that one. And you get false. Uh, so Boolean or data objects, they're also used as the results of comparison operators. Uh, equal, equal, just like in, in C++ and Java is the quality operator. And then you have all the regular, and these are all the same as in C++ and Java, including the explanation point equal for not equal. Uh, so let's do some of those. We can ask is 5, is 5 greater than 6? Now let's try some mixing some things. Let's see what it does. Is 5.5 greater than 6? And you'll see when you mix operators, it tends to do the right thing. Just like in C++ and Java, it converts the integer to a float before it does the comparison, usually. Uh, but if we compare uh, quote 5, which is a string, is it greater than 4? Uh, we get an error. It says unorderable uh, types. It can't compare a string to an int. Now we're going to introduce variables now. Now identifiers uh, are used in all programming languages and in Python identifiers can start with either a letter or an underscore. They are case sensitive and they can be any length and they can contain numbers too. I don't know why he didn't mention that. So we could set a variable as a1 equal to 22, and then we type a1, we see the results stored in there. Uh, we can do a, a variable that starts with an underscore, um, a1 equals 22. If you actually want to see all the variables uh, that are defined at the level you are, you can say directory, parentheses, parentheses, and it gives you a list of variables, and you'll see uh, you have some uh, uh, starting out variables, these underscore underscore variables, which is what these are, are internal to Python. And you'll see these two variables we define are stored here. So this is actually uh, a dictionary of all the variables that are uh, available to you at this, at this level. And we'll look at that further at another time. So when you actually do assignment with variable, let's talk exactly about what happens. So if I say x is equal to 1, so this is the first time I've used the letter X as a, a name or an identifier on the left side of an equal sign. And that's important. Equals assignment, just like in uh, Java and C++. The first time you use a variable name on the left of an equal side is when it allocates the variable name. So because I'm doing this, X will now exist and it will point to the value 1. Now, the variable x actually doesn't have a data type associated with it. It's just a variable name, and the, it points to an object. And the object is what has a data type associated with it, and the value in this list of methods. So I can reassign x to a very different type of data, like a string. And x will now point to this new object. So it now points to a new object. It's actually a different type. And the old one is out in memory and it's gone. There's nothing pointing to it. So it does, it's not referred to by x anymore. So let's go back and set x equal to 1. So we're actually making a new object 1 to, getting set to. And I'm going to say x is equal to x plus 1. 
uh, so this you recognize will count so that takes the value of x uh, and adds it to 1. So it's basically adding the object 1 to the obj another object 1 and it's going to result in a new result which is 2 and then that new 2 is a new object which now gets set to x. So if we print out the x we'll see that it's 2. Now we can also set x to a special value uh, none and none actually represents that it has no value. So if you have a variable and you want to keep the variable name or create a variable but not have it initially point to anything, that's why this is a special value to represent it doesn't currently point to data. If you have an assignment statement and it's the first time you've used the sum, after you say the sum equals one, this is a picture of the variable name and this is the object in memory, which is type int. And then if you execute uh, the next statement and you say the sum equals two, uh, the old uh, one object in memory no longer has something pointing to it and now the sum points to this new object with two which is also of type int. And now if you do the sum equals quote ABC, uh, the sum variable will now be set to point to this new object and the old two objects there's nothing pointing to it. Now uh, we're also going to show you this is a table that you'll find in the uh, Python reference link at the very bottom and this actually shows every operator in Python and we'll be learning these as we go along um, and this is the order of uh, precedence so uh, what order does it do things from lowest to highest priority uh, so the highest priority, for example, is something in parentheses. And we're going to learn that when you put things in parentheses, they're either uh, a normal parentheses, which is called binding, or it's what's called a tuples. We'll learn about those uh, fairly soon. Uh, we haven't talked about a lot of these, but here's your exponentiation. Uh, here's your normal multiply and divides and modulus. Here's plus and minus. Uh, here's the and, or, and not. So we've already learned about quite a few of these. Uh, so we'll stop here and then we'll continue with collections in the next uh, video.